Hello guys and welcome to the first tutorial series on how I created the sounds and how I implemented the sounds into this cave level. Disclaimer, for the first time I'm doing uh, this kind of tutorial or this kind of video like sound creation, implementation, blah blah blah. I'm doing it with, without a script, so bear with me. I'll try to keep it short, focused and get everything important in. So as you can hear, the drops happen all around me. So let's go through it step by step. <clears throat> Sound creation is the first thing. So let's see how we did that. For the base sound creation, I used a reactor ensemble called Space Drone. So what it does is it basically spawns in little white noise drops. Um, let me quickly do this. Band pass, really resonant. It spawns white noise and then filters it. Like that. Yeah, and it spawns these little things and you can tweak the ensemble until you get something that you like. For example, this is my version of Drip Drop. The original one sounds like this. Much more stuff going on, higher density. So yeah, the sound is stereo, which is, I don't want that. So I mix down to mono. Also I have some frequencies that I don't want. Yeah, that's about it. So next I just rendered out, uh, rendered out an audio file and I cut it up into pieces. Sounds okay, good enough to, to start. And I used uh, some Reaper Awesome workflow to export all the things at once. Um, check out this tutorial on YouTube, Advanced Game Audio SFX Render Workflow. Really, really cool. Will help you a lot if you work with many, many assets at the same time. So after we export that, we do the basic stuff. We just create a sound cue, random sample selection, blah, blah, blah. Important, we set a sound class, we create a sound class for our sounds. I don't set attenuation here or concurrency, uh, because I will do this later. So how do we get the sounds into our game? Um, so it's dynamic and, you know, it spawns all around you. So, let me show you what it does first. Debug, enable. So as you can see, there's a sphere, that's, uh, it's a debug sphere, so that's the radius where the sounds might be spawned, and the blue points are where the sounds are actually spawned. This blueprint uh, I took from Dan Reynolds, uh, from the Spatial Audio Temple. Dude, Dan is an awesome guy, seriously, the stuff he pulls in, pulls off with blueprints, amazing, I love that. <laughs> so I took, I took the random position blueprint. Um, one thing I did is I modified it a little bit, because the calculate random location um, uh, macro was calculating only positive values, you know, and since uh, so the random sounds would only go into one direction. So by multiplying the radius with minus one and using them this value as a minimum uh, and the normal radius as a maximum for a random float in ranges, we can get really really nice, um, yeah, we can get the result we want, which is the sound spawn all over the place. Another thing I did is I added a second sound, so sometimes I want to play two sounds uh, at the same location, like two different sound cues, so I added a second sound, it's just basic blueprint stuff, and added some debug stuff, so, you know, so you can see that stuff, like this. Yeah. So I really recommend, go check out the Spatial Audio Temple, uh, check out the blueprints, experiment, it's really, really cool stuff. So I'm using that for the bats, 
and for the water droplets. Um, yeah, really cool about this blueprint, you can set uh, your sound cues, which you want to what sound do you want to play. You can set attenuation here and the concurrency settings. Concurrency, really easy, I just want a maximum of 8 sounds to be played. Um, sound attenuation looks like that in this case, just some custom curve. It's not really like falling off quickly because I want the sound to stay loud for a while. For example, the air absorption filter um, starts working uh, before the volume drop-off happens. So you get the same volume but the different color of the sound. So I just recommend you guys experiment with that. Um, what else is there? Binaural, yeah, obviously, blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. Attenuation reverb send. Yeah, um, we, we send these sounds to reverb dynamically. And it's not a long distance, just 5 meters uh, is the maximum distance. But when the drop gets spawned really close to you, it sounds like, oof, well, damn, it's really close to me. This is why I picked these values. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's talk about the sound classes a little bit. Because I really like that. Um, so to set the sound classes is important to me because sometimes I just want to listen to a specific uh, category of sound. So I create sound classes for all my assets or groups of assets. and. As their parent, I create a, an, a muter sound class. So the sole purpose of this sound class is just to mute, to mute stuff or not mute stuff. So in real time, I can just select these, put the volume on one, and there we go. We have a full mix. And if I just want to listen to the bats, I'll just mute everything but select the bats and make it one. Yeah, the bats thing will be really cool. <laughs> uh, how I did that sound, I love that. Um, so yeah, one last thing. Just wanna enable debug on all of these spheres and disable the static meshes so you can see Oh, what's going on here? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, disable static meshes. There we go. Mm, where's the debug? What the droplets? Debug. Yeah, not on the bats, just on the droplets. So this is where I put the stuff. The white radius uh, is the white sphere is the radius of possible spawn locations. Um, they're different for the they are different for the specific spawns. Because like if you're in this spawn you still hear some sound from this spawn. And that's that. I also include height into the calculation just to get different colors of sounds based on distance and their filtering. So that is that for the water drops. Um, so main takeaways are experiment with reactor and sound generation in general. It's really cool what you can do just with white noise. There's more white noise coming up in these tutorials. Uh, check out all the content that Epic is giving us. Check out their blueprints and learn them because this system is so nice. I love it. I use it for the bats as well. And feel free to experiment. Um, you can hear some reverb. Yeah, 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 yeah. One more thing. We can hear some reverb. So I set up different reverb rooms. This is like for the small room, and this is for the the rest is basically the rest, it's just a global reverb. And yeah, that's that. That's why the droplets sound different in different rooms. Alright guys, like I said, this was my first time sharing an Unreal Engine sound design tutorial. And um, doing it without a script. <laughs> so tell me if you found this interesting, tell me uh, what you need to know more about, because I did not go into super high detail on everything and what you want me to do differently to help you better understand this stuff and more stuff is coming up soon so yeah i wish you guys a great weekend enjoy bye bye